And now, a math lesson. Let's say the Zaxby's chicken finger plate comes with four, five, or six hand-breaded fingers and one side of Zax sauce. Plus, you can try them with Zax sauce, honey mustard, hot honey mustard, tongue torch, teriyaki, wimpy, nuclear, barbecue, ranch, sweet and spicy, and same. How many possible combinations does that make? Carry the two with the remainder... Uh, a lot. Zaxby's chicken finger plate. The sauceabilities are endless. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It is Wake Up Warchant, proudly presented by Zaxby's. Indescribably good hand-breaded golden fried chicken fingers on a plate it's dinner enjoy zaxby's indescribably good get some zax sauce on there too please please Corey lathered, Clark's up, here. lathered in zax sauce yeah. yeah there he is you didn't think he was here but he's here Corey clark senior writer lead writer for warchant.com your ultimate symbol sports source promo codes warchant 30 for 30 free days of access Crazy times in the kingdom, Corey. What did LSU, Bama cancel or postponed mm-hmm. rather? Yep. What was it? Tennessee and A and M postponed. Yep. Can we Mississippi State and Auburn? Maybe I think. Can we? Can we be fortunate enough next week for such fate? Uh, yeah. That's yeah. That would be. Uh, I mean, I really we talked about it on headlines. Not that we're going to start with the Clemson game, but what is the point of playing that game? Like for anybody, because Dabo, if you're climbing, Corey, you're climbing. I mean, I don't think any Florida State fans and maybe not even most of the players would be upset if Clemson is like, look, we've had a bit of an outbreak here. We got two players and a student manager that have tested positive in Florida State's. Well, that's way too many. Shut it down. Shut it down. We can't play. We can't risk it. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, We'd be going through some back channels to like be like, look, let's just save face. You get the win. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Um Otherwise, we're aiming at Lord, we're aiming at Trevor's knees. Oh, hey, hey, come on! Let's right, that's what you tell them. That's what <laughs> Thrasher tells the Clemson president. Look, we don't want to do it, but if you're gonna if you're gonna have them up there like you get against Georgia Tech when you played in the second half when you already had fifty at halftime, we're diving at knees, baby. We're diving at knees. So uh, so we'll we'll see how that goes. But yes, I don't think any Florida State fans would be uh, too upset if uh, the Clemson game was postponed until twenty twenty one. So what happened on headlines? I heard you got a little emo- not emotional. That sounds like uh, it was. Able- uh, you know, it was just Ira and Jeff kind of rationalizing the last two losses, which I understand the rationalization. And you know, Pitt's quarterback came back, and and Jeff was like, "Look, uh, you know, Florida State has all these problems. Pitt, you know, he's probably one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the league." And I'm like, "That doesn't matter. They're going to get blown out by Bailey." And then I cussed Hawkman. It, you know that. What are you going to say then when they lose to Bailey Hawkman by? Or, and they already lost to Malik Cunningham by five touchdowns. Quarterback doesn't matter. And I lost, just, lost I kind of lost too. it. Yeah. Uh, I lost it for about two or three minutes. I think, I think most Florida State fans could relate because it's not normal. Like the losing is one thing. You understand the losses, but they were trying to bring up Florida in thirteen and Florida in what was the other one? Seventeen, where they went four and eight those two years. Well, they yes. weren't getting pounded by bad teams. Right, right. Like they were losing. They lost to Vanderbilt 34 to 17. They lost to Missouri 34 to 16. They weren't losing by 40 points and 30 points to awful teams. You know, they lost to Georgia Southern and Georgia Southern didn't complete a forward pass. All right. That's easy to make fun of. I get it. But is that any more embarrassing than losing to Louisville and Pittsburgh by 80 combined points or whatever it was? 60 combined points? Yes. Yes, Corey, it is. Go it on. probably is, but not by that much. Like, I, I feel like we've been so. <laughs> We've been, we're so inside this, like we've been here for the whole thing that it's like, you know, if you're around your son every day for four years, like I've been essentially since this whole pandemic started, I can't get away from the kid. Um, it all, and you're around him every day. Well, you don't notice the growth, but when the aunt comes and sees him and hasn't seen him in a year, they're like, wow, he looks like an adult. He looks like a different person. Well, when you take a step back and look at what this Florida State program has become, it'd be like, you're like, I don't care what the excuses are. That's embarrassing. Quit getting blown out by bad teams. That's all. So that it, it's just me kind of losing my, losing my blank for a little while um, and lamenting 
not just losing, but losing in such embarrassing, non-competitive fashion. You'd almost think we had a pre-production meeting and, and had this whole scripted out this way. We're going to do a little bit of a abridged, uh, modified Renegade Express. I figured we should do that today because uh, on the show Thursday, we'll probably have some personnel changes we're, we're thinking we'll probably be talking about, which will probably be the, the bigger news of the day. Who knows how many and, and how important the players are in the grand scheme of things, but wasn't a whole lot to kind of glean from uh, Tuesday's availability to give you a Wednesday show. So I'm like, hey, let's go ahead and let Renegade Express ride today. Probably leave the thread up for maybe another few hours uh, so people can maybe get a few more questions in. And then we're going to do our live show Thursday for you on Friday. With that said, Mark down in Naples, Matt AMCZ says, wake up, Corey. Do not apologize for your passionate, angry rants this week. I have enjoyed the brutal honesty on the shows. We are all invested in this program as fans, maybe boosters, or even media members. We are allowed to be angry. If we're not angry, that means we no longer care. We can't just throw up our arms and say, oh, well, we're a basketball school now. No. Apathy will not help in this rebuild, and it is a rebuild. Make no mistake. My question this week, do you think it would have been better for FSU had this season been canceled? I do not. Sure, we would have avoided the worst record since Gerald Ford was president, but my argument is that Norvell had to see this awful product on the field. He had to see which players could be part of his vision for the future. There's only so much Norvell and the staff could do in spring 2021 without the benefit of seeing this team play this fall. At least now, staring 2-9 and nine or 3-8 and eight in the face and another public execution by Clemson looming, players will be leaving. Open spots for guys who will live up to the standard going to 2021. Your thoughts. And go Knowles! There you go. Hey, we're all in this together. We all want the same thing. Uh, I'm not necessarily a fan anymore, but it's fun to cover a good football program. And it is, um, torture is too strong a word, but it is a little bit monotonous, a little bit mind-numbing, as you all can imagine, because you're watching it every Saturday to cover, write, and talk about a really bad one. So we're all wanting the same thing. We all want Florida State to be relevant again. That's where that comes from. It comes from a good place, folks, I promise. Um, and, yeah, you know, I think there's two sides to that. Yes, I do think Mike Norvell needed to see this. He needed to experience this. He needed to understand what players he can count on, what players he can't. Um, and you get that through actual games, not just uh, some practices and some off-season conditioning. But at the same token, you didn't really want recruits to see it. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the counter to that. That's it's like – I think there is a there is a benefit to getting to rock bottom with some of these players and knowing who you can count on, who needs to not be playing much anymore, who's good. There are those guys too who you can depend on. But yeah, the the recruits, the families, the coaches of these recruits, um, you know, you in that instance you'd kind of hope that maybe they hadn't seen some of the things they'd seen. Yeah, it's totally hindsight twenty twenty. I mean, if if they cancel the season, who knows if I'm even here right now on the show. Um, so I am glad they played the season. However, yeah, me too. Me too. However, to the, to the sort of point that he had to see this to get a good I idea of it, I mean, I do think if you would have been able to, you know, just practice like a fall season practice, and then you have spring football, and then you have your off season program, and then your preseason camp, and then you're, you know, getting ready for your 2021 season to start. Man, that's a lot of time to establish your standard. That's a lot of practice time to watch these guys react to the grind, the monotony of that. Uh, you have scrimmages where you can put those guys under stressful situations to get a decent idea of where you're at. And, yeah, you don't blow any sort of equity you have with your shiny new toy of a new head coach in terms of tarnishing your, your pitch, your marketing, your message to recruits because it's just – it's not where you need it to be right now, obviously. And as, you know, Gene kind of pointed out, I think a few weeks back when, when talking about the receivers, you look and, you look and see what the class of 18 and 19 receiver-wise has done. There's nobody in the 19 class. Uh, 18, you know, Treshawn Harrison gone, Demarcus Adams gone. Uh, you know, you've, you've kind of backlogged a few weak recruiting classes. You, you can't afford to stack more on top of it or, or have to kind of find – diamonds in the rough but that's that's where this program is right now and it's kind of kind of scary to think about you know a roster with those guys but to a lot of your folks points at home you think those folks uh, those under recruited guys 
have the right mindset. They're hungry. They're passionate. They'll want to play hard for Florida State. Maybe. Maybe. No, no, I, I do think they'll play. I think, that, look, I do think that if you, if, and that's, that seems to be what's on the menu at Florida State now. You're not, you're not dining at a fancy steakhouse. You're not at a, what was it, the Silver Slipper with Ooh. Willie Williams back in the day ordering nice. the lobster. Nice. Um, you're at a, you know, another establishment ordering cheese fries. Um, but, you know, your, your order, if you get the two and three star players, and again, I know people don't want that. You need five star players to win championships. Absolutely. You need, you can win with three star players though, not 10 games, but you can win eight. And if you get three star players that feel, I don't know, beholden to Florida state, like they owe Florida state something that can help as opposed to what's Florida state going to do for me. I think there was a president once that said, had a, don't don't ask what Florida State can do for you. Hmm. Ask what you can do for Florida State. Grover Cleveland. If they can start getting recruits like that that feel you know actually um, inspired and um, you know I don't know they they feel wonderful that Florida State recruited them when their other options were other you know name them Louisville, Pitt, Ohio. I'll just start naming the teams that have beaten Florida State, <laughs> NC State coming up. They'll 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 feel like they owe Florida State. They want to they and maybe they want to get Florida State back to the mountaintop. And it's not just can Florida State get me to the league. It's like can I build this program back up with this coach? I want to be a part of that. You get those kind of players that want to be a part of that, and maybe they're not six three, one ninety five receivers that run four three, but they're five eight. But they have that that will, that heart, that whatever. Like Keyshawn, Keyshawn hasn't had a great year by any means, but you can win with Keyshawn Helton's. You can't win. You can't win championships with a bunch of maybe undersized guys like Keyshawn Helton. But you can win games with guys that play hard and care. And I, I'm telling you, I'll always remember Keyshawn being carted off the field at Clemson, and the way he was on that stretcher trying to pump his guys up and his teammates up. You need guys like that. You just do, and they don't have enough of them. At the same time. I'm not. I'm not advocating for just going down the three-star menu for the rest of our lives. You can you can get, turn this into a program that has set a standard that has a certain way of playing and expectations with Memphis type recruits, but then you better take that next step because I know we're way into the future here. But if Mike Norvell just strings a bunch of seven-win seasons together with three-star recruits but never gets those five-star guys, he won't be here long either. But man, what we wouldn't give for a seven-win season. Yeah, I'm trying to think about, I mean, the downside, obviously, with these three-star kids is that, by and large, they're not day-one contributors. And if you want to purge this roster and you want new blood, well, you know, a kid who's 18 years old that, you know, isn't even ranked in the rivals like 300 is probably not going to be uh, day-one ready. But you, you can kind of, you can strike gold on the offensive line with guys that are under-recruited. Um, I don't know if linebackers necessarily, defensive backs not is not historically one where you, you have diamonds in the rough, but you know on the offensive line you can. But man, this they need some they need some help on the defensive line. They need some help at the linebacker spot. Uh, that secondary is going to need help with Asante leaving. And man, you it's hard to find day one ready guys that are not you know rivals one hundred and fifty guys. It just kind of kind of is the case, but such is life right now. Let's keep it moving, Corey. Moving along, three dubs next up. He says, maybe she says, two weeks ago, comma, Corey mentioned players may not get used to or wants to lose, but it does have less sting week over week. I feel like Norvell and company are getting to that point as well. Glad you are getting bitcoins in the tip jar, but Aslan has to relax. It makes me cringe when someone gives a $2 tip and it's kind of brushed off. Then someone gives a $100 tip, and then a tornado siren goes off. <laughs> Callers skip the line based on tips. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm in a strip club. Sheesh. Do callers skip the lines for tips? No, because people are on YouTube that are one leaving the tips. Yeah. So I, no, I don't look, if, But, I mean, obviously, if Ray Pereira or James B. calls... I, I can see that they might go to the front of the line. That's just how life works. Um, but yeah, we you know not e not every tip is the same. Well, two dollars is different than a hundred dollars. It's like treating uh, Dion the same as you would treat 
Corey, Corey Mangum. Mangum. Yeah, hey, we both came up with Mangum yeah. at the same time. How about that? Corey with a K. Yeah. Uh, what was the original part of the question? No clue, man. Uh, oh, you, just about them getting used to winning I or guess. used to losing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, I don't know how you could argue it. You know, it, does it sting? Yeah, in the moment, but does it sting enough for you to make sure that you bust your ass in practice and in preparation? I don't know. It would appear not. And I'm not talking about the coaches. I'm talking about the players. Um, you get used to playing at a certain level. You get used to your standard, which is well below what it needs to be. And if you lose, you lose. Then now, look, Asante Samuel, and I meant to bring this up on yesterday's show. Asante Samuel has been doing it right the whole season. He plays hard. Um, you know, they brought up on Monday how he asked, even when they're, they're down by 24 points with like four minutes to go and Norvell decides to punt, even though there are still only three scores down, Aslan. I don't know why he just gave up there. Um, and Asante goes over to Papuchis and asks to go in to be on the punt cover team just because he wanted to make sure they, they did that one right, even though Florida State only had three active quarterbacks. To me, that's the kind of guys that you use as examples, right? Asante Samuel, he's the best player on that defense, and he's, and he's asking to go into the game with four minutes to go up by 24 points because it means something to him. And that's an example you can use. That's a standard you need to point to and say, this is what we're trying to do. This is who we're trying to be. Um, other people, not so much. Well, you only got four weeks left with that kid. So, I mean, I don't know how much. Well, look, so I've made this. I made, I've made this point, though, before. Like, the, when the Florida State basketball team turned around, it was Tony Douglas's senior year. So he was the only – Chris Singleton was a freshman, but he was a freshman. Tony Douglas was by and far by far the best player on that team. He was the only reason they got to the tournament. He was incredible. He was. Led, led the ACC in scoring and was the defensive player of the year. So those – but they had six freshmen in that class. Those – so their whole first year in college was watching Tony Douglas work every day. Not just what he did in game days – all they did was talk about he was in the gym an hour before they were. He would be the last one to leave. They never seen anyone work harder. Over and over, that's what they talked about. Tony Douglas was not just the leader on game days. They saw how he prepared and how hard he worked and how much it meant to him. He broke down in tears when he saw Florida State come up. I was there in the hotel when, they saw their, when he saw Florida State's name come up on Selection Sunday. He broke down in tears. Tony Douglas did. That's how much it mattered to him. Well, what do you think that does for the freshmen that see that, that are around that? Now, basketball is different because it's only 15 and not 85. But for the other DBs in that room to see the way Asante works, that can only help, right? They, they do have an example to say, that's who we want to be like. Now, yes, he's going to be gone, but you hope he can leave an impact. Uh, uh, an impact at least with the DBs, maybe the whole team but certainly with the DBs of this is how you prepare. This is how much it's supposed to mean to you. This is how much you're supposed to give. And this is how you're supposed to compete every play, no matter the score. And maybe they can learn a lesson there or maybe not. I'm just, I'm looking, Hey, I'm tired of being negative. I'm looking for, I'm looking for positives. Asante Samuel has been an, has been a positive this year. Well, a uh, fitting that you said that let's segue to the next one comes from Noel six. Wake up. Hey fellas. I hate seeing our team like this. Give me some hope. If you can, love the show. Is that it? We're just going to go with Asante? Yeah. Next question. Drill, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Jordan Travis, if he's healthy, gives you hope. He's a, he's a dynamic player. Even if he can't be your starting quarterback moving forward, he is certainly somebody that's a part of your offense for the foreseeable future and is a weapon. He is a weapon that you can use in a variety of ways. And I say he can't be your off just if he can't stay healthy. But if he can stay healthy, I feel like you're excited about him. And the only, the only other thing I'd give you that, that's to be encouraged by is something I brought up uh, yesterday is how good they are on those first drives. When they, the things they rep the most during the week, they obviously do a very good job of coaching those, get communicating, and, and the players do a good job of executing those plays. Now, you'd rather them execute 80 plays well instead of 15, but you got to start somewhere. So that should give you hope that these coaches, once they get a full spring practice, once they get their players in, once their offense is learned by the guys they want running it, that that should bode well moving forward for the offense, that they're going to, it could look a lot more like that for, for an entire game. 
because they've repped all those plays, they know all those plays, than it is just for a half of a first quarter. That's, that's my one encouragement there. They obviously can coach for two drives as they stick around, hopefully, and as they develop these players and as they get uh, more ingrained in the offense, those two drives become 12 drives. And now you're winning games instead of losing by four touchdowns. How was that? Was that all right, Alice? That was yeah, pretty positive. That was good. That was good. I like okay, it. good. I would just say from a more macro level, and maybe this is cynical, so it's not. I think it's giving you hope. Football is so important. I mean, it just goes without saying. It's Captain Obvious stuff. The importance of football to this institution of higher learning uh, cannot be overstated. So no matter what happens in the short term, and I know we look at the economics of things and, you know, we see, you know, people have lost their jobs and, uh, you, know, you know, struggling to make ends meet. Hopefully we'll have a bounce back sooner than later when it comes to uh, the economy overall. Uh, we see the ACC kind of lagging behind the SEC and the Big Ten in terms of TV contract money and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, I, the people who, who help fund this program, I think they're doing all right. So no matter whatever happens, they're going to be around to make sure this thing gets fixed. So if for some reason this isn't it, they're going to keep going back to the drawing board to, to get it fixed. So that's what keeps me that's what keeps me sane. You know, it's just, it's a blip. Things happen. You know, you have a little bit of doldrums here and there. Florida State's going to be back eventually. Sooner than later, we hope. Uh, so just know that. No matter what happens, we'll be back at some point. I don't know exactly when. Florida State, though, too proud of a program just to go away or, or make this be the, uh, the new reality. So I don't know. Well said, Aslan. Well that said. Drill Sergeant Porter, wake up. Let me start by saying I fully expect this team to go 2-9 and nine at this point. However, we still have the possibility of a state championship on the table. If we can win this week, beat Duke, then we can claim a North Carolina state title. How much would the ACC love that? How many electoral votes is that? Yeah, right. Uh, um, uh, did they ever call North Carolina, by the way, or is that just still hanging out there? Like, just... I think the senator I, uh, re, re, uh, conceded, and they still haven't uh, certified. Have they or called it for the whatever. president. They like, should. I think so. I mean, yeah. Like Trump's literally, leader. like I couldn't, and I never, I didn't do enough. But I would, I would, I would click back to CNN. Uh, I don't know, once every hour and a half, just you to mean see where the, where the uh, where the votes were. In in North Carolina, never changed. The the vote to- total never changed. And it's like, okay, why don't they just, and, and John King keeps telling me this is, we're going to give this, they're probably going to be the president, probably going to be the president here. It's like, well, why not just go ahead? What, and for, so for all I know, North Carolina still, they haven't called it. Um, and I'm, well, we won't even, we well, won't even is, get into what's going on with the presidential election. But um, yeah, that's a good point. They could be, they could be the best team in North Carolina. How about that? They could, I, Duke definitely is winnable. This NC doesn't help. NC State seems a little different. Yeah, this doesn't help because I don't know the particular reason, but there there is a particular reason why they did stop counting, and it's not because of any like malfeasance or anything. I think there's some there was something in terms of, like the ballots that were left where it's like, yeah, we're not going to start counting those until another week. So that's why like there's a reason why they stopped where they stopped. But yeah, the numbers just don't add up. For I'm a, and by the way, I'm all for getting every vote, counting every vote, every legal vote, Corey, every legal vote, <laughs> sure. But I, I'm not a big – like, we're still counting, man. Right, we're right. still counting. Georgia's still counting. Arizona's like it, still it, dumping Arizona's votes. Arizona's still yeah. counting. It's like, what? why don't y'all make some people work overtime once you realize this is a different election, right? Like, there were so many mail-in ballots that they weren't used to. Nevada just straight up took a day off. <laughs> Their election office is like, we had an administrative day. We're taking a day off. Well, it's Thursday. How can you give us our results? And then you can take three and a half years off if you want to. Just give the, <laughs> give us the results. Give the country the results. Um, that I would hope moving forward, because I think this is going to be the wave of the future is mail-in ballots a lot more. Um, because people see, I guess, how, you know, I don't know. Is COVID still going to be around four years from now? Who knows? But um, you hope they have more people on staff to maybe count these things quicker. So we're, no, we're still not out here waiting. What's the lead up to in Pennsylvania now? The election was a week ago. Anyway, uh, so hopefully they, uh, hopefully uh, Florida State. I don't like their chances this week. I think they can rally up at the end of the year and uh, find a way to beat Duke. I, I do, I do see that being a possibility. This one this week seems a, a little, a little more tall, a little taller of a task because of the great Bailey Hockman, obviously. I think I saw people maybe on YouTube asking us why do we keep talking about a bowl game and that if Florida State does get an invitation, they should decline it because they're just so embarrassing of a team right now? No, they won't do that. 
But I know because you want those practices. And yeah, I know absolutely. It's, I know it's a strong brand. But, man, if, if they go 2-9, and because I think I saw Schleybaugh from ESPN do his bowl predictions a week ago. He doesn't have Florida State in a bowl game. Uh, there's there's like a half dozen that are not being played this year because, you know, sponsors can't get the money and it's just not worth it. So he did projections. Did you see any of the projections? Like, like who, who was in the Gasparilla Bowl? I, you know, you know, you know, you know, Corey, I don't know. So I'm going to look it up. So there's two people, actually, Corey. There's uh, Schleybaugh and some guy, Kyle, I think, Bonagira. The Gasparilla Bowl right now projection. One guy says Tech, Georgia Tech versus Ole Miss. Schleybaugh says Georgia Tech versus South Carolina. Okay, so why would they take Georgia Tech and not Florida State? What possible rationale would that would it would a bowl in Tampa, a bowl in Florida? And I know they're not they're not necessarily expecting a huge crowds. Um, that's indoors, right? Yeah, no, 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 it's outdoors. It's not. Uh, it, the Gasparilla Bowl's in Tampa now. It's where the uh, the Bucks play. Okay, so, all right. But Ray J. so the crowd, you're not going to get a huge crowd. There will be limits to the crowd sizes, obviously. But um, you want eyes on your game, and Georgia Tech doesn't bring any. So again, Florida State isn't a great brand, but it maybe but maybe there's a, a chance they they don't reward Florida State for going two and nine or three and eight. But what are you going to you're going to take a three win Georgia Tech team instead? What sense does that make? Just because they beat Florida State? I don't think the Gasparilla Bowl is going to be looking at tiebreakers like, well, you know, Georgia Tech deserves it more. They beat Florida State. No, they'll be like, who can we pick that will get more eyes on our bowl game? And Florida State brings that. So, I, you know, I would, I would think Florida State will be I, – I, maybe I'm speaking out of school. I don't know. I don't have any inside knowledge. It would really be surprising if these bowl, te- bowl games, as long as Florida State's willing to go, that these bowl games wouldn't select Florida State as opposed to like a Georgia Tech or a name another South Carolina even for that matter like why 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 would they want Georgia Tech South Carolina not Florida State South Carolina anyway, yeah shoot just, they're talking about South Carolina's going to fire their coach yeah but they're, they're going to make it to a bowl yeah that'd be kind of weird uh, I kind of want to go back to El Paso I gotta lie not who's right in now. El Paso right now do you have that not right now but I, I would like to go back to El Paso uh, Schleybaugh's got NC State taking on Utah. Uh, okay. The other dude's got Cal taking on Wake. Oh, man, imagine that big Wake-Cal game. That's El Paso would love that, too. ESPN would love to get Wake and Cal matched up. Yeah. Not Florida State. Bowl. Wouldn't want Florida State. Uh, pinstripe Bulls, both guys say Purdue versus Boston College. Big time. That's, that's another, another, uh, that's yeah, another more tie-in bit. for us uh, in the ACC. I don't know what other one we're. I mean, there is, now there is a chance that the ACC will just go with the tie-ins, and they'll only they'll do it. Maybe the ACC just does it fairly, like they don't want to upset Georgia Tech, um, and say Georgia, you know, if Georgia Tech and Florida State tie. They'll be like, well, the tie goes to the team that won, and we're going to just go straight by the standings on who gets to play in bowls. I, I could, I guess they might do that. If I was Florida State, I'd be like, are you crazy? Everything we did for your conference. You're going to pick George. Okay, all right, we'll remember this. You know, you could do something like that. Oh, kick us when we're down. That's fine. But we're going to be good again. And, you know, you know, I don't, I don't know that you would want to uh, – one of your marquee programs, you would just uh, kick to the gutter like that so you could reward Georgia Tech's 3-9 and nine season. But what do I know? You know what the Champs Bowl is now? It was, it was Russell Athletic, I think, when we played Wisconsin. I think it was Champs mm-hmm. we played. You know, you know what it's going to be this year? The Cheez-It Bowl. Okay. All right, man. I haven't had a cheese it in a while. Cheese its are good. They are. They are. I could eat like I eat. I eat like thirty-eight to forty of them at a time. Just can't stop. You, you and know then the, they just get stuck in your teeth. Yeah. And so you're really eating them for another. You're eating them for another hour after that. You know what the Belk Bowl is this year? Not the Belk Bowl. The Duke's Mayo Bowl. Okay. The Hellman's Duke's guy. Mayo is in mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, correct? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a Hellman's guy, but uh, me too. But it's good to see some staying the same. AutoZone, Liberty Bowl, Tony the Tiger, Sun Bowl. Yeah. You know, tradition. All the greats, yeah. yeah that's good. Uh, Carolina Knoll, 45. Actually, real quick, Drill Sergeant Porter says, uh, despite uh, whatever happens with the bowl, uh, I still love the Knolls and your show. Wake Up War Chant just hits different. Go Knolls. Oh, thank you, Drill Sergeant Porter. We appreciate that. Yeah. All right, last one. Uh, Carolina Knoll, 45. Wake up! First time posting to the Tribal Council, per tradition. 
I'm from Rock Hill, South Carolina, a.k.a. Football City, USA, home of Jadavian Clowney, Stephon Gilmore, Mason Rudolph, and other NFL players. Well, Jamie Robinson, I think, from Florida State, uh, is from Rock Hill. Was uh, where Greg Jones in from Rock Hill? No, I don't think so. He's from uh, South Carolina. Maybe he's from uh, Beaufort. Yes, Beaufort? correct. Beaufort? Beaufort. Yeah, Beaufort. so not Rock Hill. Okay. Yeah, we should. You should have done something. You know, if you were covering the beat, you know, Beaufort versus uh, Buford. You know, you could. You know, you right. versus Greg. Just in right. random. You know, acts of strength and such. <laughs> sure, that would have been fun. All right, uh, my question is simple: Is it time to move on from Adam Fuller? I sat back for two years wondering when Harlan Barnett would be fired, and I felt like we waited too long and it never happened. This defense is worse than it was last year. There are no signs of improvement. Thanks, guys. Uh, you can't move on yet. I mean, no, let, let you can't move the on yet. Yeah, you're not going to fire him in the middle of the season. Let him finish no, out the string. You, you, we'll, we'll see where they are after the Duke game and after a, you know maybe no bowl game or the, the, the Gasparilla Bowl against Cal. Um, but it is such an odd season. And I brought this up maybe a week ago that, you know, Norvell judging Fuller just on this season, maybe doesn't seem that fair to Norvell because he doesn't want to be judged on this season. So when you look at the defense, if you would have told me before the season, again, that Najel Dean doesn't play a snap, Marvin Wilson might as well be Marvin Clark, just nothing, no, no impact at all. Um, Corey Durden hasn't been very good or very impactful at all. Um, Travis J has been hurt. Uh, Keem Den hasn't played. You know, I, I think you, you doesn't get a pass necessarily, but you understand at least a little bit why they're so bad. They're young and they're injured. That's really, I mean, that's well said, and that really makes a long answer short, but to the point. Um, but that said, though, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're, you know, even that, I guess that first game, you held the opposition to 16 points. Although, I mean, it was, that was about the ugliest. I mean, that looked like a, a, I don't know, man. Like Georgia Tech moved the ball on this team with that quarterback, with everybody healthy, everybody bought in, everybody excited. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I do not know. I, uh, see, I don't know. Like, would he have fired? I mean, so, like, we're pretty confident, like, Willie was going to fire Walt Bell. So, like, Walt got out of town. I just wonder, like, where the precedent is on this. Um, because, you know, for for the the bullets left to fire for Mike Norvell in terms of, like, you know, maybe having a, a healthy season with uh, Jordan Travis or maybe Chubba find something. Like, he's got his kind of parachutes and he's got his shields. And be like, well, you know, sorry, Adam. I can only stick around here if I, if I shake things up on, on your side of the ball. Um, I mean, I don't think this, you know, no one here is that eager to start paying buyout money that's going to be seven figures because he's got a, he signed a three-year contract. And what he's making, like 900 I think? 800 800 So, yeah. and I mean. Which if, apparently is it's apparently chump change these days. Right. Um, yeah, I, nobody's eager for that. But, again, we talked about this last week. Um, if Norvell very well could just say, nope, this isn't working. He, he would know better than us, right? Yeah. If this is working, because he doesn't, you know, this is his dream chance. This is his chance. He doesn't want it to be undone by a bad defensive coordinator hire. So if he thinks this was the wrong hire and he, or let me put it this way. If he knows in his bones now after eight weeks, uh, or whatever, it's actually been 11 months that it was the bad hire. Well, he needs to fix it. He needs to remedy it quickly the problem is he better have somebody on the hook because you don't need to go gallivanting around the country trying to find somebody else only to get them raises that they're the places they're at you better have somebody that already in mind that's willing to come and if you have that and you think right now that they're appreciably better than adam fuller i think you can sell that to coburn but if you're just wanting to get rid of them and say i got some guys in mind that ain't going to cut it you better have one person in mind that's already said yes on his burner phone and go, you know, go from there. Um, but, you know, as you as you sit back and look at this season, I'm, I'm starting to take a different tact with it. Like they have not been coached well on defense at all. That that it can't be argued. It's inarguable. But you know, he what he these players just aren't good enough. They don't they don't take coaching. They don't apply it to the field. And I don't know that that uh, 
that Mike Norvell is going to judge Adam Fuller on the fact that Leonard Warner can't play linebacker and that, uh, you know, Raymond Woody isn't good enough at, to play safety at Florida State. And Jane Lars Woodby isn't good enough, apparently, to be an impact player at Florida State. And Akeem Dent turned into Casper the Ghost. Like, you, I don't know how you hold that against Adam Fuller. You know? I don't, I don't let me, okay, who, who do you, but do you hold that best? against him or, or do you kind of project out the next year of like, what's going to be all that much better? Yeah, you know, but like, I don't know. These, I, I, these guys I, are going to trust their fundamentals better after a full spring practice. So the the question is, what, Norvell has to ask himself if he has. Let's say he has a guy in mind. Let's make up a name, Corey Clark. He has Corey Clark in mind to be his defensive coordinator. Well, no, I don't think you should should make it so kind of hypothetical because that that's going to be a problem too. I think Corey's. I don't know what kind of Rolodex he has when it comes to defensive minds. Right, like, but who would who, who if if he could get the best defensive coordinator in the country, like the best, whoever we think it is at the moment, the guy from Cincinnati. How about that? The guy that you like from Cincinnati. Yeah, but even then, don't we think it's more fickle than him? But yeah, okay, let's say that the Cincinnati yeah. DC. Yeah. This year, what would he have done with this team? Because I'm to the point now watching these players that I think they would have been better, but I, I certainly do. If they if they were getting coached better, or if the guy communicated better, or if they believed in him. I don't know if you can get some of these players to believe or care enough. I just don't know that you can. You can so bring is it in that Belichick. Or they're just not good enough. So what? Like, well, no. You... I, I, there's two, you could be not great, but buy in completely, and that that saves you points and yards. But the combination of not being very good, thinking you're better than you are, and not caring is a woeful combination, as we've seen play out. So I don't know that you could get the Cincinnati DC. He comes in, and all of a sudden, Florida State's 27th in the nation in, in defense, or 67th. I just don't know what impact in one year, this particular year uh, specifically, what 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 the war is for for a good DC and a bad DC with these players. But that's the ever know that's the unknowable question, right? It's like chicken or the egg. Like I, I don't know that maybe if they had a guy they believed in more that was better, they would buy in more, and the defense would have actually shown some improvement this season. So that's why Norvell gets paid money to make these decisions. Um, we certainly haven't seen anything that tells us that Adam Fuller is is the man for this job, but we're seven games in. But the defense has not gotten better at all. But as as he made a point of on Monday, he's like basically he was trying to say, you try to coach defense with Raymond Woody and Brendan Gant getting seventy snaps at safety. That's essentially what he was saying in a in a in a much more polite way. Um, and by the way, I think Brendan Gant can be a can end up being a nice player. The point there being he hadn't practiced really at all this whole season. He's been hurt, yeah. like the half the team. So, you know, it's Raymond Woody and then a Brendan Gant that's not still not the, the normal Brendan Gant physically and doesn't have the reps that he would have. And, you know, you got Stephen Dix playing linebacker every snap. And, and you know, Leonard Warner's having to play defensive end. And you had three Jarvis Brownlees playing all the snaps at corner. And he was probably your fifth corner coming into the season, at least fifth. He's now number two. So, you know, he, he's got some issues that he's having to deal with. Those aren't, those aren't excuses, but they're reasons. There, there's no excuse for the defense to look the way it's looked. But there are at least a, there, there are some reasons why. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah, listen, I hope no one And no Hamsa's that thick. huge. No Hamsa. Hamsa just, I really think Hamsa's at least an, an extra, he's worth, what, 35 yards a game on defense? Subtracting. Is he, though? But, like, I, I mean, I don't I mean, I can't think. Because he makes us, he'll at least make a tackle eight yards downfield and not let the guy break that tackle and go for an extra 30. Have they done a lot of that, though? I mean, I know I know they've breaking tackles from, like, the defensive line trying to do arm tackles and linebackers, but, like, has, I mean, Travis J been punked? Well, somebody got ran over in the Miami game, right? It wasn't him, though. I don't know. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, Ham says a legitimate player that, that helps you. I mean, it's, it's yeah. hard to, it's hard to, tangibly give you kind of a number I just wonder like where's the balance between like if you are Norvell and you get rid of Adam Fuller let's say and then you come back in 2021 and you win like six games and your defense just looks marginally better like you maybe get you get like the Walt Bell to Kendall Bryles kind of improvement like right noticeable but nothing to really celebrate then like what do you then what are you left with when you're trying to explain away you know I mean, you're definitely going to your third season, like on the hot seat in terms of like make or break year, 
Or like, do you just kind of go the you know the casino route when like you know all the mob bosses meet and they're trying to talk about who lives and who dies and you know one guy like sticks up, oh, he's, he's you know he's like a, he's a marine, good guy, and then like ah eh, you know to be on the safe and it's like why take a chance and everybody just gets whacked. You know it's like what like why take the chance to bring him back and I just don't know what you're gonna think is gonna be considerably different in terms of like emotional buy-in, mental dialed inness. That's not even a word. Um, I just, yeah, I, I, if you don't like what's going on this year, I just don't understand what you think is going to be better next season. Like Hamza, I don't know, is Hamza going to come back and then he actually does play? Travis Jay's is fully healthy. Your defensive line is going to be just... Well, you're hoping that that's, that's the transfer Oof. portal. Yeah. You got to get, you, you got to hope the transfer portal gets you. Um, but you then know. you guys want to transfer here if it's him. No, I, I, know, that's, I understood, but yeah. I mean, they might want to transfer and play for Odell. I mean, I don't know. Right, we, right. we don't know how that works. Um, th- th- look, that's just what, that's the job though. That's the job of Norvell is, does he believe in this guy enough to, you know, obviously he doesn't think Adam Fuller's done a good job, but how much, how much uh, of the weight of that is on the players and the injuries and the, just the personality of some of those guys? And how much of it is that the coaching acumen of Fuller or the communication skills of Fuller? All that comes into play. Like, he's now been around that guy for two years. He hasn't had a good defense either of the two years he's been around him. Um, but, you know, does he does he think, okay, this guy really knows what he's doing. I understand what he's doing. I understand. He, he's actually not a bad teacher. He's just got to have willing students. Or is it, I've seen it now for two years. He still, he knows how to coach defense, but he cannot get his point across. He does not. It does not translate to the players on the practice field taking it to the games. You know that that. So that's what you have. To, but then okay. So you do make a change. Well, now these guys have got their what th- third or fourth defensive coordinator in their careers. Is that good for their development? Is that what you want to sell to your team? Is that you got to buy in and trust and believe in the process? We know it's not going well now, but trust this will get there. And then after nine or ten or eleven games, you fire the defensive coordinator. Is that the me- and I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but you know those are the things he has to weigh. What's what's for the betterment of the program? Is he going to be able to get anybody appreciably better next year? Would you, if you were a DC on the rise, would you come to Florida State? So the, all those all those factor in. That's why again, that's why he gets paid a lot of money. He has to figure that out. I don't, you know, this it was the one hire that I was skeptical about. Let's just say that skepticism has been earned. Um, and I, and I'm still skeptical there as if I, I can't imagine anybody listening to this isn't, um, we're all skeptical about that hire. It's just, it, Norvell has to decide what's for the best of the program as far as making a, making a change. If it doesn't get any better at all or riding through thinking that the guy knows what he's doing and I've just got to get him better groceries to cook with. No, I, I do wonder how difficult it is to kind of separate the data from like the politics in terms of like looking at him, seeing what he's done, trying to extrapolate what could happen in 2021, but then ultimately kind of thinking, all right, well, if I do get rid of him, what does that say about me? You know, like I, I like when I have to go and ask David yeah. Coburn to come in to have like a meeting with on Thursday, be like, Hey, you know, this guy that I made you commit to for three years at 800 grand a pop. Yeah. Oops. You know, and then what that sort of does, because he'll get dinged up on that. We'll, you know, we'll probably have a show where if, if Adam Fuller does get fired, that's, you know, let's say this offseason, probably within like three days of that happening, at one point, one of us is going to say, well, you know, what does that say about Mike Norvell hiring a guy that he fired after one season that he worked with one year before he came to Florida? So like, yeah, you should have known. It's not, a good, it's not a good look, right? Yeah. I know you're doing that goofy voice, but that's yeah. not a good look. That's no, a fair criticism. Yeah. You had two huge hires to make. We feel like you did pretty well on the one on the offensive line, the defensive coordinator, that the jury is still out and they're actually, the deliberation seems to be wrapping up pretty quickly. Um, so you, you know, th- th- that was a huge hire. And if you come back after 11 games and say, oops, my bad, that was a bad one. That doesn't bode well. But again, the thing with Norvell that, that again should give you hope, even through the, all of this mess is that this happened every year at Memphis. Every year he was having to recycle. He was not having to recycle. He was having to go hire coaches because they kept getting uh, taken from bigger programs. So you would, by the way, he could always go and get that special teams coach at Penn State. They're 0-3 now. That guy might not be liking life. He might want to come down and reunite with, with Norvell. But, uh, so he's used to this. He's used to making hires. And he's done really well in that regard in his career, uh, just judging by the win-loss record and the fact that a lot of his coaches went on to better jobs. 
So he's he's proven he can do this. So is the is the one year at Florida State enough for him to realize? Nope, that I've just made a mistake. I don't know how many, and I we'd have to go back and look. I don't know how many guys he's fired. I doubt many, right? If any, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they've been they were pretty good at Memphis. There was no reason yeah. to. So that's it's easier them. for us. I've never had to fire anybody. Yeah. Um, in in a, so you know, especially somebody I uprooted from Memphis. So I I don't know. That's easier said than done. Number one, but I do. But I will say this: I do think Mike Norvell. And I always was surprised with this with Jimbo. I thought Jimbo was competitive enough that Bill Miller would have been asked to take a hike long ago. <laughs> and, and Rick Trickett, for that matter. And name another coach. You know, any of the coaches he didn't take with him. I still, uh, Charles I still, Kelly. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. I don't, I don't he, like, I don't like when people take shots at Rick Trickett all that much. Like I don't have. Well, like, but you know, it Trickett, was, but, it was quite uh, obvious what the, what the weakness of that team was. And you know, I, unless Jimbo is going to blame himself, who else would he blame for why the offensive line? was so bad and projecting to be worse and worse and worse. So like, Jimbo kept those quick, guys on. Imagine real quick, like if we would, we still had Landon Dickerson and Josh Ball, and then you get Devontae Love-Taylor to transfer in, and he plays guard. You know, like, really good offensive No, sure, I'm, I'm talking about 18. I'm talking about 17, 18, and yeah. 19. Not yeah. now. And th- those were train wrecks of offensive lines. And Josh Ball, Landon Dickerson was around for some of it. Um, he just couldn't stay healthy. And then Josh Ball... I don't think I know what he did off the field or what he was accused of, but he, th- throwing that aside, he never proved to be like a an elite player by any stretch. He would have been better than what they had probably, but he wasn't anything special. I'm saying like um, Trickett still had a decent eye for talent. He didn't just totally go in the tank and bring in bums left and right, you know. Yeah, but I there know. was a reason you couldn't recruit some of the best players oh, in the country yeah, yeah, because yeah, of, sure, because of sure. his personality. Yeah. And Jimbo was willing to deal with that, but then it got to a point where it was untenable, and he hightailed it to College Station. But my point being, he never really, I don't think Jimbo ever fired anyone at Florida State, even as things started going downhill, yeah. real downhill. And um, that, that I always thought he would be, I always even said it, like, man, you're crazy if you don't think Jimbo Fisher loves winning more than he loves his friendship with Rick Trickett. Hmm. You're crazy. But then I don't know if that might not be right. And then, so the same thing going to Norvell, though, I do, and maybe I'm wrong again, I do think he is competitive enough that if he has to make a tough decision, he won't hesitate. I yeah. do if he if he feels like there is somebody out there that can make his program significantly better or even marginally better, just better. He will go to Coburn or he will make the decision. Well, he can't make the decision himself, but he will he will make that decision uh, if he has the financial freedom to go and get somebody else that he thinks is better for the program, even if it makes him look bad in the short term because he made a bad hire. No, I don't know. Willie kind of got bailed out because Walt Bell took a quote unquote promotion. Uh, to go to UMass, but you know, Will, I don't know what Willie was going to do with that all OC position, but uh, he got bailed out when uh, when when the Minutemen uh, came knocking. Minutemen came knocking for that for the OC. They saw that off of that Florida State offense in eighteen, and like, give me, they have architected that. That's who's going to turn this around, baby. That's what's going to that's what's going to get them uh, excited in the in the nutmeg state or what? What is Massachusetts? The bean pot state? Bay the Bay State? I thought the, the Bay, Bay State. state. The, the the Harvard Yard State, yeah, whatever they are. What is the bad? Who's the who's the nutmeg state? Is that Connecticut? I guess, yeah. They're they I definitely think Massachusetts is the. You Bay think they're state. the bean pot? They're the Bay State. Yeah, well, that's a dumb nickname. The bean pot's the hockey tournament they have. <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I wonder how that happened. Right, there's like no natural connection between Walt Bell and. Uh, Amherst, Massachusetts, but sure enough, like he ends up there. Whatever. Maybe they, just, they they saw that they saw that Sam Howell kid in, in high school. And they're like, oh, I look got at it. you, man, you you nailed it. Yeah, they saw that he was on with Sam Howell. Like, yeah. well, we need it. We need we could use a Sam Howell, and he yeah. probably he probably swore to them. Look, you hire me, Sam Howell's coming with me. I promise. Can't don't have it in writing, but promise handshake agreement, like a Jerry Maguire. Yeah. My, his word is stronger than oak. We shook on it. He said, if I go to UMass, he's coming. So Massachusetts is the Bay State, there you go. the old colony state, and the codfish state. Ah, okay. But you got it right, man. The Bay State. Good for yeah. you, buddy. Yeah. Did you look up what the see... nutmeg state is? Yeah, I got to do the nutmeg state. All right. As Corey uh, looks that up, uh, maybe some hoops real quick for you. Uh, the schedule dropped. 27th November, first home game, season opener, Gardner-Webb. Try to get seven in a win over uh, seven in a row over the Gators. What are our first six home games? First six games of the season are at home, I think, Corey. I should look that five. 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 All right. Uh, feel good about that. Uh, there's a good preview up on War Chant right now. There's a video with Ira and Corey breaking it down as well, too. Uh, 
Corey's high on Scotty Barnes, Sardar Calhoun. Yep. Some, some young guns. MJ Walker is back. Yeah. Uh, he, he hope he takes a big leap. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we broke that down there. Yeah, the Gardner-Webb's the first game. They have 20 conference games. They have five teams they play twice. Um, Georgia Tech, Miami, Clemson, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech are the five they play twice. And they get both Duke and Virginia, who are the two top ten teams in the ACC. They get, get both of them at home in front of a raucous, I don't know, 2,300 people. So Connecticut is the nutmeg state. And then I decided, I was, sorry, I was like, what is nutmeg? I don't know what nutmeg is. It's a spice. And do you know what nutmeg is? Yeah, it's like a spice, like for baking and stuff, like nutmeg. Yeah, look at you. I didn't know that. It's nutmeg is the seed or ground spice of several species of the genus Mari- Maristica. Ooh, uh, it's yeah. a dark level. It's a dark leaved evergreen tree cultivated for two spices derived from its fruit. Yeah. Nutmeg from its seed and mace from the seed covering. Ah. Ooh, was that mace comes from? Uh, Maybe. Yeah, not that mace, right? No. Just blinding people with nutmeg. Well, it's kind of maybe it's got some a peppery sort of. Uh, okay, I see. I see you working nutmeg. A lot of go, a lot going on in that spice. Yeah. You know what I found out the other day? I don't know if I mentioned on the show. Not the other day, like a few weeks ago. Like you know, curry is not just a singular spice. Like curry powder is actually like three different things. Never knew that. I was like curry is one either. thing. Like salt. You know, like salt's not a bunch. Salt's just salt. You know, it's not right. like three different things mixed into one. But anyhow. The more you know, everybody. That's what we're right, man. To do. We're we're it's an educational show. We've always told you guys that. So we'll speak to the uh, head football coach of the Florida State Seminoles, Mike Norvell, a little bit before eleven a.m. on Wednesday. We do anticipate being able to ask him and receive some answers about uh, some injury updates. Devontae Love Taylor, uh, Jordan Travis, I don't know, maybe maybe Travis J as well, and uh, Marvin potential- Wilson. Marvin Wilson, yes, and then some potential. Hamsa, don't forget, don't forget Hamsa. Uh, you always got to be a smart aleck, don't you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're right. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe some potentially some guys, maybe they've decided to opt out or something. I don't know. That's like the big thing on uh, hashtag FSU Twitter or all these, like everyone's trying to guess who's going to opt out, how many. Uh, I put the number three and a half out to Ira. I'm like, how many people are going to uh, – we'll find out that have opted out tomorrow. Three and a half. Over under, he took the under. So if you're, if you're hoping I think for I the, take the, the under purge, too. And- if you're hoping for the purge to occur – uh, probably not happening on um, Wednesday. And I wonder if he would, like, even if the kids had opted out, if they would announce something like that. Right. You know? Right, right. I don't know. So, yeah. What Dennis do we do? Briggs opted back in. Yeah. So, we just cool. look at the two deep. We just look at the two deep and be like, all right. So, if you're not on the two deep, are you still with the team? Are you not with the team? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll be able it's to be a weird ha- season, folks. It's a weird, bizarre season. And I keep them. trying to remind myself that. At least we're getting to watch college football because that that did not seem like it was going to be the case in July. If we ask him, has anybody opted out? I mean, do you think he'll like dance around, or do you think he'll he'll we will he will just do yes, and then we ha- and then it's our responsibility to just be like, can you well, say who? one of the players' <laughs> names, uh, our initials? Just yeah. give us initials yeah. or like a, a position room. Yeah, like what's his hometown? Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, well, no. Who can you name famous people from his hometown? Yeah, we, we can look right. that up. Right, right. right. Um, I would. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think that he would. Uh, I don't think he'd just say yes and then not answer the question. I would. I but not tell us who. I think he would him and Hall around it, or say it's up to them to to say if they've done it. Or we've had some we've had some preliminary conversations. We we're working through that process now. You know, I, I can see that coming. I don't. I don't know that he would actually just straight up tell us yes. These two guys opted out. It's just, it's just weird. I mean, I don't know why you would opt out. I mean, I guess like, like Marvin or Terry kind of makes sense. You're hurt. Uh, you have a draft to get get prepared for. But if you're like a yeah, sophomore. none of these guys are good enough yeah. to opt out. Yeah, I mean, like, except for, um, uh, you know, Asante. Right, right. Like, like, and no that offense. would be disappointing, but I would understand it a lot. I mean, I think most of us would understand that. But it would be disappointing, especially if they only have any corners left. But uh, other than that, yeah, I, who who's good enough to opt out on this team? Yeah, I mean, like, not to I, sl- not know. to slander my my home away from home and my people. I mean, you know, Isaiah Bolden opted out. He he's going to Jackson State. Uh, Jamarcus Chapman opted out, and I think got a offer to UMass. Like it's yeah. just it never works. So I just don't like why not just kind of ride out the string. And I guess well, that goes well Isaiah points. Bolden didn't get opted out, did he? I thought he got kicked off the team or quit the team. Well, I mean, isn't that what opting out is? Well, no, I mean, I thought he got like he would rather be at Florida State, but they told him not to, not to. 
No, I thought so like no. Because remember, remember, oh, he's gonna just gonna change the offense. He wants to help out the team. I know. And then like a week later, I thought he quit the team. Yeah, I thought he quit. Like I think he got kicked off. I thought it was well, like well, opting out to me is different. Opting out means I'm 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 not going to play anymore to protect myself for the draft at this point. Okay. Like Dennis Briggs wasn't doing that in August. He was opting out because of COVID. Right. But right. now at this point, I feel like the opting out. If you've already made it this far, it's not necessarily for COVID. It's because you want to protect yourself from uh, for for the draft. Which again, what who on this team needs to worry about that? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Splendid. folks. Splendid. All right, yeah, so head over to warchant.com probably around 11 in the morning on uh, Wednesday. Corey will be live transcribing the comments from Mike Norvell, and we'll see uh, what the depth chart and the roster looks like at that point. And we'll be back with another show for you folks on Thursday, and we'll do a live one Thursday evening, nightish for you on Friday because it's football season, but we're a basketball school. He's Corey. I'm Asel. Thanks for listening to Wake Up War Champ, probably presented by Zaxby's, indescribably Good. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.